Originally the Eiffel Tower was 300 meters tall. But since then, antennas have been added, therefore it is rising today to a height of 324 meters. The tower was born during the Exposition Universelle of 1889, which was to commemorate the centenary of the French Revolution. In order to attract visitors to the event, it was necessary to create an exceptional monument. This is Gustave Eiffel. At the time, he was already famous for these metal constructions such as the Garabit viaduct, or the design of the internal structural elements of the Statue of Liberty. It seems paradoxical but Gustave Eiffel is not the man who invented the tower. In reality it is two of his main engineers, three years before the inauguration of the Universal Exhibition, they emitted the idea of drawing a project a little crazy. A tower of 300 meters high. But why 300 meters? It is a symbolic dimension, it is the equivalent of 1000 feet, and it would have been the tallest tower at the time. On the first drawing the tower looks like a Volga 6 story pylon. But after some retouching of the initial sketch, Gustav Eiffel were excited about the project. And among the 107 projects presented at the Paris City Hall, he won the competition in May 1886, for the construction of a 300 meter tower. The construction began on January 1887. In fact it took exactly two years, two months, and five days to build the Eiffel Tower with 200 workers on the construction site. To dig the foundations of the Eiffel Tower, small vapor machines were available, but the bulk of the work was done simply by shovels and pickaxes. But the artisanal method were quite effective. The foundations were completed in just four months, and the pillars were finally rising. The tower rests on four pillars, each consisting of four feet that go up to the top. But with all this scrap metal, do you know how much does weighs the Eiffel Tower? The Eiffel Tower weighs a little more than 7,000 tons if you count only the metal frame, and 10,000 tons if you add the weight of the buildings and the elevators. Actually it's not that heavy, this is the weight of a five-story building. On March 31, 1889, the World Exhibition were inaugurated in Paris. And guess who was the star? Congratulations to Mr. Gustave Eiffel. The Eiffel Tower is composed of more than 18,000 metal parts that are assembled together by rivets. So as you can imagine, it is a permanent job to maintain this structure properly. Vous êtes à quelle hauteur là? On a on a un peu plus de 115 mètres. 115 mètres d'eau. Donc voilà. On voit le côté Trocadéro là. On voit le musée du Quai Branly. Ouais, c'est chouette. Obviously they are not here to enjoy the view. Their mission is to change some of the 20,000 bulbs of the tower. Donc ok, allez, on va accrocher tout ça. No tool handling is done without this large white bag. It is a mandatory precaution because just below there are several thousand of people. On n'est jamais à l'abri qu'une petite vis nous échappe. Grâce à ça, elle tombera dedans et on est tranquille. On met tout en œuvre pour éviter que rien ne tombe. Vous êtes juste en train de changer une ampoule eh, Mais justement, c'est parce qu'on est juste en train de changer une ampoule qu'on est obligé de faire tout ça. Donc là, on, on met la nouvelle ampoule. Ok. The technicians always work in pairs, and never very far from each other. They must be able to help each other in case of a problem. In total, there are 1,665 steps from the esplanade up to the top of the Eiffel Tower. But the stairway from the second floor to the top is not open to the public. The elevator dates back to 1899. And have you got any idea how it works? It works thanks to the force of the water, it's called a hydraulic lift. To drive it, there was once a driver who was placed on a nacelle, who could open the valves to get more or less water into the water circuits. But now the drivers are over. The elevator has been automated. For the other lifts of the tower, especially the one that climbs to the top of the tower, they are electric. Progress oblige. Nothing displeased Gustav Eiffel more to say that his Eiffel Tower was useless. That is why he quickly developed all kinds of scientific experiences, starting with a metrology laboratory installed on the third floor. 
The view is magnificent. From the top of the tower you have a 80 km panoramic view on Paris. Gustave was quite lucky to be able to work in his laboratory, with such an exceptional sight. Well, he's still here. Gustav Eiffel arranged on the third floor a small apartment in which he could sleep, work and receive friends. If you go to the top, you will be able to see him in his apartment in the presence of his daughter and Thomas Edison. It should also be pointed out that it was the wireless telegraph that saved the Eiffel Tower from demolition. As strange as it may seem, yes, the Eiffel Tower should have been dismantled after 20 years. This is true. This is the antenna which saved the tower. During World War I, the tower's wireless station helped the French military to intercept enemy messages from Berlin. Today, the tower counts more than 100 antennas which send radio and television signals around the world. The main part of the maintenance work on the Eiffel Tower remains the painting. Each painting campaign lasts about one and a half years. It is necessary to put several layers of paint, so that is about 60 tons of paints to be applied on the whole tower. And it is done the hard way. It is all handmade paint, there is no question of using a gun, only brushes. And since the beginning of the century, methods have hardly evolved. Painters always play acrobats to restore beauty to the tower. Until now, it was restored every seven years. It was discovered that the lower part, up to the first floor was aging much slowly than the rest of the building. So it was decided to repaint the bottom only every 10 years, and every 5 years for the top of the tower. Since its construction, the Eiffel Tower has already been repainted 19 times. The Eiffel Tower has always been a training ground for people in need of record of all kinds. Some went down the Eiffel Tower by bike, others tried to beat the records of climbing the 1,665 stairs, others even risked their life by jumping from the first floor of the tower. In 1912, Franz Reichelt who designed a wearable parachute, thought to have a great idea by testing it by jumping from the first floor of the tower. And you know what? The parachute did not work, and he crashed. Today the Eiffel Tower is fully illuminated from the inside, the spotlights gradually turn on as soon as the night starts to fall. 336 projector bulbs wrap the Eiffel Tower in golden light every evening. Contrary to popular beliefs, the tower's nightly illumination only represents about 4% of the monument's annual energy expenses. On the 31st of December 1999, at the approach of midnight, the entire world discovered the beacon and the tower's sparkling lights. The 20,000 sparkling lights bring the monument to life for 5 minutes, every hour on the hour until 1 a.m. So make sure to be on time. And if you have the chance of being in Paris on the 14th of July, you should not miss one of the most outstanding fireworks in the world, displayed every year on the Eiffel Tower. For the time being we've compiled for you a short sequence of the best moments of this year, we hope that you'll enjoy. If you have learned something today, please give us a like and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any Paris travel tips.